What's up, everyone? Welcome in to Around the Felt, our week four predictions. Joining me is my good friend Reagan, who's 0-3 on the big bets this year, but I'm sure you're hoping to write the ship, Reagan, this week. I'm not sure if it's going to happen, though, because I know our big bet. We're going to get into it relatively early. I don't know, bud. How are you feeling about it this week? Uh, yeah, I'm feeling very confident. I'm actually going to be at the game tomorrow. I'm working the tailgate, so, um, you know, uh, I feel good about it. I feel like my aura and energy will bring confidence to the Cowboys, and they'll be able to get it done. Yeah, can you stop the run for him? Because I, I don't know if you can. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, Devin Singletary will probably help him right the ship. <laughs> now nah, Singletary's going to have a big day tomorrow, but we'll get into that. Mm -hmm. But first, a mm -hmm. little bit of news we got. So we touched on Justin Herbert yesterday, Reagan, saying re-aggravated the ankle, not looking good. Well, today he now says he's progressing and doesn't mm. think that sitting out is the way we're heading. So Justin Herbert looks like he's going to be playing against the Chiefs this weekend. However, his two starting tackles are out, and he's already compromised. <laughs> not a recipe for success. No, definitely not, bro. Definitely not. But, I mean, it, I I can't imagine Taylor Heineke, a quarterback against the Chiefs this week. That's going to get ugly, So especially with all the – players but then again it's a long season your quarterback's coming in injury it's tough because it's the division game you know if it was like the big yeah it's a big one if you're playing the bills you know it's a, like a team that's similar to the chiefs caliber but it's like you know they're not the division game maybe a bench him i don't know it's a long season it's a tough call it really is because you gotta look long term and if he gets hit and is worse it's like well why did you play him for one game like i don't know it is difficult but hey we're not doctors so Doctors think he can go, then Herbert's going to be out there. We're podcasters. We ain't docs. We ain't, we ain't docs. docs. We ain't go to school for doctors. Speaking of the Kansas City Chiefs, Reagan, Travis Kelsey on his slow start, quote, I'm not getting caught up in getting the targets and all that. What do you think about Kelsey's slow start? Do you think he's going to write the ship? Yeah, I'd say side effects of the vaccine. <laughs> now, uh, I'm just saying that because he's the Pfizer guy. But, um, yeah, dude, it, it sucks if you drafted him early, which I did in a couple leagues, and I'm sure a lot of people did because I was like, look what he did in the playoffs. Like, he, you know, he figured it out. And then also they got all these weapons. So it's like you can't take away Travis Kelsey when you got Rasheed Rice going into year two. You bring in Hollywood, you draft worthy. Uh, and then we expected the run game to be more dominant. But with Pacheco being out, I would think that may open up more for him because they're going to have to pass more. But – that's kind of the whole reason I was saying don't draft Mahomes. I mean, this offense just – they don't need to kill you passing the ball. Like, they don't need those guys to be supermen. Their defense is really good, and they're fine, you know. I don't know. I, I, I think you'd be selling at his floor. But if I don't have him, I'd try to go trade for him because you get him for cheap. But if I have him, I don't know if it's even worth selling him because you, you're not going to get, like, maximum value. I agree so. on that front. I do think Kelsey gets more involved this week. Just what we saw on the sideline, his facial expressions didn't look happy. I mean, the team's winning, right? So yeah, I know. He, I mean, he's a he's a pro's pro, but at the same time, you want to feel as like a player, you want to feel like you're contributing to that win, which is just human nature, you know. So I, I get it. And Kelsey's been that dude for so long there that I'm sure he's a little frustrated with the targets, but he's not going to say anything publicly because, I mean, he's they're back to back defending Super Bowl champions and they're undefeated, so it's, it's not mm -hmm. like he's going to make a big problem with it. No, you're completely right. I do think he writes the ship this week, though. I'm not saying he's going to go for like 80, 90, 100 yards, but I do think Andy Reid is going to scheme something up to get him in the end zone. Now, Fair. I'm not confident enough in it where I'm going to put him in big dogs parlay this week, but I'm just saying I think Kelsey does score this week. Yeah, I was going to say I'm not taking it if you put him in. <laughs> no, don't worry. I'm not doing that. That wraps up the news. Let's get Big Z in the house, huh? Z. Where are you, Z? Z. What's, yeah. up, Z what's up Z all right fellas we're gonna start off with Caleb his first question is when well, he starts off with a statement I think the Giants can beat the Cowboys outright this week hell right, yeah Caleb. Caleb so do I then he goes who has to perform and or underperform for this to become a reality who needs to perform well Daniel Jones needs to perform for this to be a reality I mean certainly he needs to continue on the success he's had I mean I know uh, over the past two games, he has four touchdowns to two or to zero interceptions. So he needs to continue to take care of the football and put the Giants offense in positions to succeed and not hurt them. A lot goes into the offensive line. Can you stop Micah Parsons in this good pass rush? We know you can beat the Cowboys on the ground. 
Now can Devin Singletary, maybe Tyron Tracy, can they get the can they run the ball down their throats? We saw Singletary have some success last week against the Browns. Can you continue on that? It's all about snowballing this into next week. So it's a massive game. Neither of these teams want to go one and three because when you get to one and three, the season already feels like it's starting to slip away. So yeah, I agree. I'll go different route here and go with the defense. Uh, Drew Phillips, rookie corner out of Kentucky, is out, and he's been an absolute baller. Our best defensive back so far this season through the first two weeks. So that's going to be a big loss. He got hurt at the beginning of week three's game. That's why I didn't say through three weeks. So he barely played last week, but an absolute stud. So, And he plays the slot. CeeDee Lamb lines up in the slot a lot. So I'm worried about who's going to be lined up on him, whether that's going to be Cordell Flott if they put him in the slot or if – Flat in the I, slot. Flat in the slot, or if Isaiah Simmons gets in there, but the pass rush needs to get home against that Dallas D line. They haven't had a sack against Dallas in two years since 2022. That has <laughs> to change. It has to be through the pass rush, and the secondary has to hold up. I do think CeeDee Lamb, unfortunately, is going to have a big game here, but hopefully they can limit that offense enough to where they can still get the job done. Yeah, and also don't let Zeke be the cow, uh, the Giants killer. Dude, always scores. So I, know, I think that would go a long way, not letting Zeke get in the end zone, even though he doesn't look and he's not what he was. But he always seems, it doesn't matter what form he's in, he always scores against the Giants. Yeah, but Rico Dowdle doesn't look good either. Like that entire running game just looks terrible. They're, all, they're like a one-trick pony right now. Yeah. All right, next question. What do you anticipate will be the most competitive game this week? Hmm. Most competitive so, game. I mean, we got some good ones. It, it, I think Green Bay, Minnesota will be very competitive. I was going to say um, the same thing, especially if Jordan Love's playing. Yes, and that's that's going on if Jordan Love's plays. If he's not to play, then I think the Eagles Bucks is going to be very competitive because that that's was my second choice. That's Thank a you, rematch. Ready? Saints Falcons. I mean, that's a division game. Um, but I mean, what about Buffalo Baltimore? Yep. Ah! I don't know. I think Baltimore hey. could win that by double digits. I'm not going to lie. I think Baltimore. I, think I have Baltimore. Have- I like Baltimore. Two and a half point favorites here. I like them two and a half as well. I like Baltimore a lot in this game. Um, But we'll get more into it later. But I don't think that'll be as close as many people think. I think Titans-Dolphins will be sneaky close as well. You want to talk about close. It's like, well, yeah, the over-under is 36 and a half. Like, one of them's going to beat the other, like, 17 to 10 or 17, 13, something like that. Like, it'll be close, but, like. That was the question. Yes. I mean, I guess you're talking about competitive. You know, you got two bottom dwellers, like. Cleveland, Las Vegas. I, it's going to be another low-scoring game that'll be close. Okay. Is that not registering for you, Reagan? No, I'm just look, answering these questions. What games will be close? Yeah, no, I got you. I got you. I was more thinking like competitive, like high stakes type of game. Yeah, like yeah. Some beat good around teams. the bush. Don't answer some good questions. Teams. Some good teams, you know. Yeah, keep jabba jabbing. All right, what do we got next? <laughs> All right, and the final question from Caleb is, uh, it's a fantasy question. What in the world should I do at tight end, at the tight end position if Sam Laporta is inactive? Even if he is active, is there a waiver wire tight end you think is worth starting? Mm. Hmm. Great question, because obviously Sam Laporta has now burnt you three weeks. I mean, last week you gave him a pass, you know, if you don't predict injuries. Um I don't know. If you can go get Conklin after the, his involvement last week, that's not a bad pickup with the Jets. Um, I looked at Conklin. Actually, Evan Ingram was on my waiver, and I believe he's going to play this week because I have Laporta and McBride in one league, and it looks like both of them – Laporta might still play, but he does have the ankle where it's like, okay, he could just twist that in the first quarter, and he's done for the day. Like He tried pushing it, and then, you know, it's a risk. You're rolling the dice. Yeah. I picked up Evan Ingram, who – I didn't think was going to be on waivers. I guess he got hurt and someone just dropped him in one of my leagues. And that was a good plug-in for me. I agree with you. I looked at Conklin, but I thought Ingram had a higher upside. And it's also like, I feel like everyone's getting burned right now with the waiver wire tight mm-hmm. ends where you pick up the guy who had a really good week last week, but they're not replicating that. I, Colby Parkinson, a guy, I think his uh, involvement's going to go up more. I mean, there's just not a lot of weapons right now with no Puka and no cup. So if I can get a guy with Stafford, we see how he ultra targets guys. So, you know, it could be his week where he gets double digit targets. So I'd like the chance for that just off of Stafford's history. Um, who else? And then Cole Komet, if he's out there after last week's big week, he's a guy I would scoop up. I mean, he's clearly kind of taking that role back from Gerald Everett. So we'll see. All right. On Walmart, his uh, first question is oh, Man, oh man, does Jaden Daniels look good? Yeah, I knew that was coming. And he goes, Do you think the Bengals can make the playoffs this year? And how about the Jags? 
Jags, no shot. No Jags, sh- no shot. shot. I agree. No shot. No shot. I mean, I, I, you you know, you can't – you didn't even hang with the Bills. I mean, that's a playoff team right there, and you weren't even in the same, like, conversation with them. They look terrible. I mean, you're already 0-3. It's already an uphill battle, and you expect there's going to be a couple more dud losses. I mean, they'd have to get really hot, but the way that offense looked, no way. Bengals, on the other hand, yeah, they can still make the playoffs. I mean, unfortunately, if you ask Bengals fans coming into the year, they'd probably be like, oh, we're going to start 3-0 and or 2-1 and at worst. Maybe we'll lose to Kansas City. But they had those, the Patriots game and the Washington game circled as wins. So, I don't know. The defense has big issues, but as long as they have Joe Burrow at the quarterback, yeah, they can make the playoffs still. It's not like you have Trevor Lawrence who hasn't proved anything. I mean, Burrow has brought the team to the Super Bowl. So, it's kind of different levels to it, in my opinion. Um, and that was it, right? And then, yeah, I, I mean, I know it wasn't a question, but yeah, Daniels looks sick. Very good. Daniels does look absolutely legit. And yeah, I agree with you, Reagan. I don't think Jacksonville has the firepower to get it done. And I don't believe in Trevor Lawrence, where we've seen Joe Burrow dig that team out of a hole in the past. Now, 0 3 will be a difficult test, especially in that division, because Baltimore is going to write their ship. Pittsburgh's already 3 0. I'm really not worried about Cleveland as much, even though they were a playoff team last year, just because Watson looks so terrible right now. But. Mm-hmm. And even just talking about wild cards, right? It's just such a competitive conference. There's so many good teams. But yeah, the Bengals can do it. The Bengals can win nine out of ten. Like we saw the Rams get out of a three and six hole last year. You know, yeah. like it happens in the sport. So Bengals well, I mean, still have a shot. And I do have some futures on them. So I'm a little pissed off right now. Jaguars, though, I, I don't believe they have a shot. Even though both teams kind of have a similar issue with the back end of their defense being just garbage. And it's really costing them right now. Yeah, it's just the Bengals offense has been able to put up points at least like Jacksonville is just struggling to even put up points. Yeah. Burrow's better than Lawrence, which is why I have more faith in them. Yeah. All right. Next one. We have a fantasy question and it is who to start week four: Devin Singletary against the Cowboys Pittman against Steelers or Jahan Dotson as basically the wide receiver one against the Buccaneers. Uh, Singletary for sure. It's definitely just Singletary. Cause, um, just cause you know, it's a starting running back. He's going to get a lot of workload, even if the game script goes bad. I mean, he'll be involved in the passing game where Pittman, I mean, until at, at this, and I drafted Pittman in a lot of leagues early, but until him and Anthony Richardson prove that they can have that connection and he can sustain more than five fantasy points in a week. I mean, he's not getting the targets are going down. The yards aren't there. It's just, you're basically banking on a touchdown to save your week. And then um, Dotson, I mean, I, I get it. The number one target, but. I, I, he'll still be the number three. Like, I think Barkley, they're going to line him out wide a little bit more. And I think God, we kind of saw last week, like he will be the number one target. So, yeah, no, I, I just can't trust Dotson. I'd rather have Singletary and bank on him getting 15 touches. And then, you know, maybe he falls in and just like, all right, you got double digits because you got the touchdown. Yeah, and you basically know that Singletary is locked in for roughly 70% of the snaps. He's third in – Missed tackles forced right now, and Dallas has the most missed tackles of defense. Dallas has allowed the most rushing yards in the league to this point. And Singletary, he's fumbled in back-to-back weeks, but he's also scored in back-to-back weeks. So I I like Singletary to punch it in. Now, you don't have a super high ceiling with Singletary, but it's clearly the safest bet there where you have the highest floor. And if you get that touchdown, then you're looking at a 15- to 18-point week, and you're feeling pretty good about that because he has been involved as a pass catcher. So I would definitely start Devin Singletary out of that bunch. Well, also, they, they haven't even officially ruled out A.J. Brown yet. I mean, you assume Smith won't clear concussion protocol, but no, Brown, has not been, Brown has not been ruled out yet, so there's still a chance he plays. And with Singletary playing on Thursday night, do you want to roll the dice and then have the number two on the Eagles? I don't. Yeah, I wouldn't want to roll that dice either. I think you start Singletary on Thursday. You know, you, you put him at a running back spot, so you have flexibility at the flex, and you rock with that. And I, I'm also, definitely not starting any pit, uh, Indianapolis wide receivers until Richardson starts to figure it out more as a passer, but also the Steelers have allowed no one scored more than 10 points, you know? So it's like, that's not really a matchup I'm looking at either. Well, this is going to be the week. I guarantee you this is a week where the Colts, everything clicks and they just light up the Steelers. It's going to be the week. (laughs) I mean, it just makes too much sense. Um, And honestly, Dotson's not even the one it's Britton Covey. He's going to be the one. I mean, we saw when the guys were getting the targets, he was the one getting all the targets against Atlanta, not, not Dotson. So, I don't even know if he'll be the one with all those injuries. All right. And uh, over to Austin. Number of, his first question is, which player is going to have the biggest performance this week? Yeah, I love this question every week. I like it, too. It's really Austin calling your shot. Media ones. And Austin's going to love this answer. It's a Houston Texan, Nico Collins. Nico 
has been feasting thus far. He gets the most targets out of the wide receiver core. We just saw what Josh Allen and his group of cast-off wideouts just did against that Jacksonville secondary. Now it's C.J. Stroud and that receiver core's turn. I think Houston hangs 30 on Jacksonville. Nico Collins is in big dogs touchdown score parlay. And Nico also last year at home, Houston's all, they're at home. He went for over 100 yards and scored against Jacksonville. I love this matchup for Nico Collins. Monster game. I think he goes over a buck 50 in this one. Wow. All right. All right. So I kind of went, uh, I went with the running back here. I think Jordan Mason against the Patriots. I love that. I think he's just going to gash him on the ground. I think they're going to try They realized like, you can't you can't fully rely on Brock Purdy. I mean, he had a good week last week, but Jawan Johnson is not going to re- replicate what he did. I think Debo is going to miss the game as well, so you're not going to lose some of those touches to some weird Debo plays. So I think Mason gets over 20 touches. I think he gets into the end zone twice here and goes for over 100 rushing yards this week. And you know maybe he adds one as a, as a receiver as well. But I think he's the touchdowns are going to come where last week the yards were there, but the touchdowns were not there. So Jordan no, Mason. don't remind me. Don't remind me. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next PTSD. up. PTSD. Big Dog doesn't like losing his parlay. All right, next up. What team is going to have the biggest showing this week? The New York Football Giants. They're going to beat the Cowboys. They've won two of the last 14 against Dallas. It's been quite a while since they've gotten a win. Dallas is reeling right now. Giants have some momentum with their fuck it attitude. That's actually their logo this year is fuck it. Like, next play, let's roll. Let's just be dogs. I think if the Giants, after that 0-2 start, when everyone's like, damn, this team is a disaster, they're falling apart, Dable might lose his job. If they can right the ship and beat Cleveland and Dallas back-to-back weeks, which were games before the season, you're like, yeah, we should be, we could beat Minnesota, not knowing how good Minnesota would be. Oh, we always beat the Commanders, but we're probably going to lose to Dallas. We're definitely going to lose to Dallas, and we're probably going to lose to Cleveland on the road. Well, if you start 0-2 and then you turn around and win those next two games you thought you were going to lose, it's all right, we're 2-2. and And now the NFC East gets really interesting. Commanders have two wins right now. Eagles have two wins. Then Dallas is sitting in the basement. Who would have thought that after four weeks? But Giants, upset win at home. Let's go. All right, all right. Well, I kind of hope you're wrong on that one, buddy, because I don't want to lose the punishment this week. But I went with the Lions here. I think they're going to kick the shit out of the the Seahawks at home here. The Lions at three and a half points. Um, Vegas is giving Seattle a lot of of, uh, respect with their hot start. But, I mean, come on. Mickey Mouse schedule. They went to their cupcake, La Mickey schedule. They went to overtime with the Patriots, barely got it done. I mean, they struggled against Bo Nix and the Broncos, and it took them to the second half to wake up. I mean, the two safeties, I mean, just looked terrible in that game. And then last week, yeah, you beat Miami good, but, I mean, look who they had at quarterback, Skylar Thompson. And then we got to see uh, the Tim Boyle experience. Yeah, that's been great. It worked out so well with the Jets and the Lions when he was there. So, I mean, Miami's just – you know, they're falling apart at the seam. So really so far, Seattle doesn't even have one signature win yet. I think this line is just, hey, they're a 3-0 team. But I think Detroit kicks the shit out of them at home. Big win. I'm calling a 20-point victory here. So I think they're going to end up beating them like 30-10, to 35-10. to 10. I think Detroit's going to put up a lot of points against Seattle, a defense that really hasn't been tested yet. Because think about it. I mean, a rookie quarterback, a Jacoby Brissett-led offense, and a Skylar Thompson-led offense, like, their defense has not been tested yet where the Lions are a offensive juggernaut and they're just going to have their way with this Seattle defense. I love that call because I'm thinking the same exact thing. Mm. So we're going to get burned and be both completely wrong. Seattle (laughs) get out of the lines. That would suck. All right. And our last question of the night, which game is, it's kind of worded really. What game are you guys the most excited to watch this week? Lost the amazing question, bud. Yeah, I'm going to um, take out Cowboys Giants because, you know, I'm going to be at the game and that's my squad. Obviously, it's a monster game. But you go right away to Buffalo, Baltimore with Buffalo's 3 0 start, just two marquee quarterbacks, two top five quarterbacks in the league. I don't think that's arguable. Going face to face on Sunday night football. It just, I don't know. It's just an awesome game. It could be a little teaser for what we're going to see in the postseason. Come back to this game. Ah, dude, it's just such a great matchup with two quarterbacks that are also really play really exciting football and are really mobile. So it's, it, I, that's going to be a really fun game. I know it's like kind of the chalky answer, but that's what I'm going to go with. Homer, get this guy a job at ESPN so he can regurgitate what they say. Homer, Homer. Uh, for me, I'm super excited about the Commanders and the Cardinals game. Uh, two of the most dynamic quarterbacks right now who have kind of looked like, I mean, so far I'd say they're both top five. 
in this year alone, taking out any history, just what they've done to the first three games. Kyler and Jaden Daniels have been offense um, amazing. Uh, the offenses have both looked really good. So, and both defenses look pretty shaky. I mean, the Cardinals defense stepped up in the second half against Detroit, but you know they both looked shaky at times. So, I think this is a game that's going to have a lot of points, a lot of fantasy value here, and I'm just really excited to see what Jaden Daniels can continue to do, and uh, you know what Kyler Murray can do with Marvin Harrison, and I really hope Trey McBride plays here as well. All right, that's, that's awesome. all we got for tonight, boys. Awesome. Thank you, Z. We Zach. appreciate you, big dog. Yeah, right, thank I'll you for boys. joining. I mean, you're you're just a great dude. And I appreciate you joining. Thank you. It's appreciated. Well, mm -hmm. have a good one, boys. Yep. Peace. Nope. Oh, he's right. gone, gone. <laughs> he yeah, shut he's... off his – as soon as he said, I'm gone, he was just completely out of the yeah, stream. Yeah, no, he's gone, he's gone. gone. He's that gone, was gone. quick. I, expect, I figured he'd hang out for like a couple seconds, but no, he was, <laughs> he was gone. He looks like he's about to go to bed. All right, Reagan, let's dive into this Thursday night game. Cowboys minus five and a half at my New York football giants, where I will be in attendance. The over under 44 and a half. Wait, 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 wait. You didn't tell me you were going to be in attendance. I don't know if I want to do that. I mean, if 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 Leak sees Colin Tong, I mean, he might go for 200 yards. I don't know if I want to. Hey, do I hope so. I hope so. I'm I don't do want to do the big bet on this dance. if Colin Tong and Dave Kerjock are screaming, Leak, Leak. Oh my gosh, he's gonna go off. He's gonna go You're off. You're gonna hear me from the parking lot, brother. Yeah, probably. So yeah, this is our continue. big bet of the week, Reagan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm back in my Giants five and a half. I think they went outright, so I'm loving it this week. I oh, think I'm well, fairly you know, confident. You, you, if you got a no, oh, don't even up. pull that, dude. I'm taking. No, you don't. Points. I mean, you're you're three and zero. Oh. I mean, come on, put your uh, put your Randy Marsh Kahuna's on the line. No. Nah. <laughs> No, I, I, I'm not doing that. I'm going to take my five and a half, and it's going to be great because they're going to win outright, and you're never wow. going to have a fucking chance. You mean, wow, I thought you were confident. Okay, so you're not actually that confident. I am confident, but I'm still keeping my okay, five so and do half. It. What do you mean? Why would I give you an advantage? Because you're, you're confident. Gonna, it'd be a LeMickey win for you. Do you want a LeMickey win as your first for the season? Sure. No, that's terrible, dude. That's terrible. Oh, Tell me I why mean, you're back my team. If it was my team, yeah. I mean, it's your team, you know. It's not like it's not like I'm saying, all right, like the Titans versus the Dolphins. I mean, you're backing your boys. I am backing anybody's my boys. boys. These are your boys. Yeah, I am backing my boys. Tell me why you're taking the Cowboys. Yeah, man. It's just you know, I, I and I'm not trying to go off the history here, but I mean, Dallas just owns the Giants historically, and I like them even more now that they're kind of backed into the corner. I mean, they've just been playing terrible. They need this win so bad. Like the Giants, you know, if they win here, they're already exceeding expectations. Where the Cowboys, it's like you cannot start one and three. I mean, this is a team that has playoff hopes, and in Jerry Jones's mind, they should be a Super Bowl team. I expect the defense to have a big get right game here. I've actually picked them up in a couple fantasy leagues here because this Giants offense doesn't scare me. I mean, you take out Malik Neighbors and you say, Hey, Wandell Robinson, hey Darius Slayton, hey Daniel Jones, you know, like go beat us. You know, just don't let don't let um don't let Leak uh beat you. And I think you'll have no problems. And offensively, I mean the Giants defense. They've been getting better, but, you know, Deshaun Watson-led offense is a lot different than a Dak Prescott-led offense. I mean, Dak's looked good so far. I mean, I know a lot of his production last week was in garbage time, but he was and he was throwing around all the field. But I think if they're able to establish the run early, I think it's going to be tough for the Giants. So that's the key for them is if they can stop the run and make Dak Prescott throw the ball 50, 60 times and beat you that way. But I, I really hope for Dallas here that they're able to just kind of chew clock, really get a lead and, you know, ground and pound with Daddle and Zeke and, you know, just get it done here. So be interesting. Yeah. The run defense for the giants is definitely going to be important. In this one, it was not good against the commanders. It was not good against Minnesota, but last week it was really good against Cleveland. And when you force Watson to drop back and pass all day, you saw what happened. They got the win. So a couple key matchups here for me, I mentioned earlier, whoever's going to be guarding CD lamb. I'm worried about the secondary. So our pass rush has to get home. Also, on our side, our offensive line needs to make sure we keep Micah Parsons, Demarcus Lawrence at bay. And Andrew Thomas had a rough go last week against Miles Garrett. Andrew Thomas is one of the best left tackles in football, but Miles Garrett is, you know, he's that dude. Now it doesn't get much easier here with Micah Parsons, who historically Thomas has done a good job on Parsons. So we need Thomas to have a big bounce back game. I mentioned earlier the run defense for Dallas has been the worst in football thus far. So I think Singletary needs to be able to be on first down. If you run the ball, let's get five, six yards and stay on schedule because if we get sacked by Micah Parsons and we're going second 15 to second 18 or third and longs, this is not a recipe for success with Daniel Jones at the helm. 
And finally, Trayvon Diggs and Leak were talking some smack in the offseason. Leak had a very professional answer about it this week, saying, ah, that's fine, like, whatever, it's it's just a game. You know, I'm just focused on the game. Really interesting to see how those two line up against each other and who gets the best of who. Because if Trayvon's able to contain Malik Neighbors, it will be tough for the Giants to move the ball, especially if Singletary doesn't do what I expect him to do. But I do believe the Giants get it done here. Just keep talking. You good, dog? My what the hell are you going, doing? Dog. Just keep going. What are you doing? Yeah, I'm my good. Been, I, said I said my piece. I said my piece. And the punishment is doing the questions in an ice bath, correct? Yeah, well, I mean, we're not reading the questions like Garrett or Zach or whoever will read the questions. You just have to sit in the ice bath during the whole question segment for the recap. Yeah, so, yeah, okay, that makes sense. I, gotta, I mean, it would just how be... I get an ice bath in here if it happens, but we'll figure it out. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure between you and Drock, those are some brilliant minds right there. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm sure you guys can figure something out. Yeah, we'll figure something you out. You know, might have to take off the suit and figure it out and maybe get your hands dirty, get a couple calluses on them, you know, really show uh, – how you guys are men. I got calluses, bro. I don't need you to tell me about that. All right, let's move on to the Saints at the Falcons. The Falcons a one-and-a-half point favorite at home. The over-under 42-and-a-half, a big game in this division early on with two teams that seem to be gunning for the division here. Reagan, who are you backing? I'm taking Atlanta purely because they're the home team here. If it was the reverse, I would take the Saints. But, you know, in a division game where he expected it to be tight, tight i am going to back the home team so but also atlanta has been looking better and better each week i mean they were one missed call away because i mean that kyle pitts one that was a bad call it was you know, but it, it's a chiefs like uh you, we don't need to take a dive into that i mean they deserve it they have taylor swift but anyway um so Kirk cousins i mean every week is looking better and better sharper and sharper i mean you see he's starting to get some good chemistry with mooney London, I mean, you'd love to see him and Pitts get a more of chemistry going. And Bijan's, you know, looking like a, a stud this year. So I think offensively they, they match up well with uh, New Orleans defense here. And I don't know. I, I still don't fully believe in this um, Saints offense. And with Kamara getting banged up late, is he going to be 100% in this matchup? I mean, he's been such a big uh, focal point of this offense and what they've been able to do so far. So even if he's limited, and not 100%. I mean, that takes away a lot from this. Is Taysom Hill going to play this week? He was out last week. I mean, that's another big piece of this offense that kind of opens up some stuff through him. So if the Saints are dealing with some injuries offensively, it's going to be tough for them. So I'm back in Atlanta and taking uh, them to cover here as well. Which yeah, I agree. I'm also backing Atlanta here. You know, I think people are buying into the Saints like a little too early. I think that yeah. win over Dallas isn't going to look as sexy as it did at the time because I don't think Dallas is as good as we thought. And that's even if Dallas beats the Giants this week. I don't think Dallas is as good this year as they have been in previous years. I don't think they get. To, I don't think they sniff twelve wins. You know, and they ain't like sniffing you, that. No, and like you mentioned, Atlanta did battle against Kansas City. You know, the defending champs, three and zero. So although they are one and two, I believe better days ahead are for Atlanta. I think it starts here. They do need to get Bijan going after last week. The Chiefs really contained him, but the way to get to the Saints is they've allowed the eighth most pass yards in the league so far this season. So I think Kirk. Cousins has to be dialed. I love when Atlanta plays in that dome. So I think he will be dialed in this one. I think Drake London has a pretty big day here and the Falcons get it done at home by a field goal. Yeah. I mean, I would, it's definitely going to be close. I mean, both teams have good defenses. So, but yeah, we can move on. The Rams at the Bears. Bears two and a half point favorites. The over under 42 and a half. Rams coming off that huge fourth quarter comeback against San Francisco while the Bears. Still just not finding their way. Are you back in the Bears here, though, Reagan? I am. I mean, we haven't – outside of the first game, we haven't disagreed yet. I'm back in the Bears here. And, honestly, the biggest part is just all the injuries the Rams have right now. I mean, it's easy to scheme up a game plan when you kind of know what team that you play twice every year. And, I mean, it took everything and everything going right for them to, to not only stay in that game but then come back and win that game where I don't think they'll be as lucky with all these injuries. I mean, the offensive line's banged up. I mean, they're lacking weapons. I mean – the Bears secondary is very good, but honestly, their defenses look very legit. Um, and I think, you know, it's a young Rams defense versus a young Bears offense. So I think the Bears offense will have a lot more success here because they're not going against a veteran defense. So I, I expect Caleb Williams to, you know, not turn the ball over as much. I think he'll have a better game here. And, uh, you know, I think this will be a big game for um, hopefully the run game here with the bears as well. Cause I mean, they got to get it going. I mean, you paid Deandre Swift in the off season and so far he's looked terrible. So although 
don't be shocked um, if he's not able to get it done, if we kind of start to see a uh, change there in Roshan Johnson and uh, yes. Khalil Herbert continue. Roshan's to get more getting more of a run this week. Eva yeah, Fusen, so Roshan's, Roshan's guy, getting more of a look. He's a guy, if he's in your leagues in fantasy, I mean, you don't have to pick him up, but definitely keep an eye on him. I mean, it's not the worst thing to throw him on your bench because starting running backs in this league are hard to find. So if you can get a guy on a good offense, then this guy's the limit. Yeah, I'm also backing Chicago. The Rams did really impress me with that win last week. It's just Matthew Stafford, veteran quarterback, Sean McVay, one of the best head coaches in football. I don't think they find that same success this week. I mean, they've allowed the seventh least passing yards as a team. So I think Stafford's not going to be able to get it done through the air. I don't love him at all this week, even though I have him starting in one league, a super flex. My quarterback depth is just not there right now. So I might have to make a switch. So if the Rams are going to get it done, it's going to be have to be through Kyron Williams again. Can he score three touchdowns like he did last week? I mean, it's certainly possible with Kyron, but I think he'll have a more difficult time this week. The Bears will probably do everything they can to limit him. And I do think we start to see that Chicago offense get on track here. I know Caleb threw for r- roughly 350 yards last week, which is good to see, but he's got to take care of the football more. The Rams defense is top three in yards allowed so far. So this is a spot for the Bears to gain their confidence I don't know if Keenan Allen's going to play yet, but I know we were having this conversation earlier with Garrett, who he's going to start. I do love Romo Dunze in this spot if Keenan Allen were to be out. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I he, we saw what he did last year without Keenan Allen. So if Allen's out again, I mean, he's he may end up being the number one option here. I mean, DJ Moore obviously is the one, but if, if he, they kind of take him out of the game, I would expect a big game for a Dunze again, and he looked great last week. That he did. Let's move on. Minnesota at Green Bay. Packers two and a half point favorites. The over under 43 and a half. And it's Aaron Jones revenge game. I was so Mm -hmm. tempted to put him in the parlay just because of that. But that Green Bay defense looks really stout early on. So I stayed away, Reagan. But your thoughts in this game. And do you think Aaron Jones punches it in? Am I going to regret not putting him in in the revenge? Uh, I definitely think Jones punches it in just because of the revenge aspect. But I think Green Bay gets it done. I mean, I'm assuming Jordan Love's going to play. So I'm back in the Packers here. I just. I still, I mean, I, I hate to say it, but I just can't fully buy into the fucking Vikings. And I know I should because they've beaten the 49ers and they've beaten the Texans and that stingy New York Giants. They beat them too. But I can't <laughs> buy into it, man. I, I mean, I just really think the Packers are going to get it done here. I think the Vikings eventually are going to have a game where everything's not going right for them offensively. So, but I mean, these are two very familiar teams. So it, it'll be interesting to see. But, um, but this is this pick right now, like if it's Willis. I'm taking the Vikings. If it's love, I'm taking the Packers. I know this line it does kind of is a middle ground where it doesn't really reflect it either way because they're unsure. But I, I don't care what the points are. If love's playing, I'm taking the Packers. If it's Willis, then I would take the Vikings. But, you know, we're recording it now, and I'm planning on love playing, so I won't change it. So even if it's Willis, I guess I'm back in the Packers, even though I don't think they're going to win. Yeah, I'm also backing the Packers here at two and a half. Now, I'll say this, Reagan, if it comes to Sunday – and it is Malik Willis, that line's going to balloon up to like probably four. I mean, uh, probably the opposite way, like four points maybe going towards Minnesota. So it could mm-hmm. be, I think it's going to go to like towards a pick or even the Vikings minus one. So we can make an adjustment on Sunday if Willis does get the nod to start the game. It is very difficult to pick it right now. I'm going Green Bay at home, thinking the return of Jordan Love. And Darnold's also a little beat up. He's got that bone bruise in his knee, so he won't be as comfortable. But this Minnesota offensive line has been great so far this year. I don't think it's going to be a very high-scoring game. I'm just taking the fact it's the Packers at home. I think these teams split this year, the home and home. So I'm going to go with the Packers. And if the line moves, we'll, we'll, we'll readjust. We'll, we'll talk about it on Sunday. But we're both on the Packers right now. All right, let's move on. Pittsburgh minus one and a half at the Colts. The over under 40 and a half. Wow. I mean, the Steelers haven't allowed more than 10 points. Richardson's been struggling, which means he's definitely going to struggle, right, Reagan? Uh, actually, I think we'll probably have the same thought here, but I'm taking the Colts uh, straight up. And my biggest thing is it kind of reminds me similarly of that Panthers-Raiders game last week where it's like everyone's going to be like, oh, the Steelers are 3-0. They've been so dominant. And look at Anthony Richardson. He struggled so much. So that makes me think with my big brain right here that the Colts are going to come out, probably beat them by double digits. Anthony Richardson is going to look the best he's ever looked. Watch Michael Pittman, who we just said the bench, he'll have his first big game where he'll go for over 100 yards and a touchdown. I mean, everything screams you should take the Steelers, so that makes me want to take the Colts, and I think they're going to end up put, like putting up like 20, 30 on this defense because 
everyone's hyping up how good the Steelers have been in that defense. And I think Fields will struggle here Um, because the Colts defense, you know, they made some improvements last week. They made a young quarterback in Caleb Williams look bad. And while Justin Fields has obviously played a lot more football, I mean, he's still a young quarterback that really hasn't proved much in this league. So I don't know. It'll be interesting, but I'm going to go with the fact that I just think it's a kind of a letdown spot for the Steelers here, especially being road favorites. I don't know. Yeah, dude. I'm also going to take the home underdog here. I think somehow, some way, Richardson mm-hmm. and Jonathan Taylor get the W here. Uh, I don't know why. I, you know, I, everything screams Steelers here. It's going to be a low scoring game. They're going to contain the Colts offense. And I don't love the Colts defense. They've allowed the second most rushing yards this year. But to be honest with you, Najee Harris just doesn't really scare me to that point where he can like break open this game. He's more of a three yards in a cloud of dust kind of guy. And he's tough to bring down. But I don't know if he has the juice that he can take over a game and win it for Pittsburgh. And let's see what can happen if a team could put 20 points in the Steelers. And Justin Fields is put in that position where he's got to go have a big drive in the fourth quarter to get it done. I Until I see that, I'm not fully bought in on the Steelers, even though their defense is so good. I just don't see the Steelers going to 4-0 here. I'm going to take the home dogs. Next, Denver at your Jets, Reagan. Jets, 7.5-point favorites. The over under 38.5, a low total, a nod to that Jets defense. Or maybe not, maybe a nod to the Broncos defense after what they did last week against Tampa Bay. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think here, Reagan? Do, you jet, do your Jets cover the 7.5? I know you're taking oh, them We're going to kill them. I mean, the Jets hate the Broncos. I mean, Sean McVay was flapping his gums – or not Sean McVay. Sean Payton was flapping his gums last year. And he was like, oh, like the blah, blah, talking all this shit about Hackett. And then we went out and kicked their ass. We kicked their ass the past couple of years. They're going to come in. We're going to make Bonex look silly. He's going to struggle. I mean, it was a great game last week, but I think he's going to struggle against a good defense that we have that improved the last week. And, you know, that's very encouraging. But, I mean, Rodgers, I mean, dude, he just looks so good. He looked back to the old Aaron Rodgers. I mean, he looked very mobile, was moving around, just looked comfortable. We're going to unlock Mike Williams this week because we unlocked Conklin and Braylon Allen already. Why not? And we unlocked Lazard, too, so we have unlocked three of our guys. Let's make it four with Mike Williams in week four. Uh, He'll definitely score this week, probably get over 50, 60 yards. So, Mike Williams, you can start with full confidence, saying that now. Um, But, yeah, big game here. We'll win. I think we're going to win 24 to 6. I got the Jets winning, but I have Denver covering, and it's because the game script that I'm kind of predicting here. Denver's allowed the second least passing yards, so I think it's going to be the two-headed monster of Brees and Braylon. That's going to get the win here for the Jets. But with that, I think it's going to be a slower game, burning the clock out. And I think after Bo Nix's play last week, I think he's got some confidence. Now we're going to at least keep him in the game. I think it could be a back to recover here. So I don't Fair. think it's ever going to be in question of the Jets winning the game. But seven and a half, I think just a lot of points. The hook's given scary. how Nix looked last week, you know, the hook is a little, a little sketchy, you know. And I think with the game being on the ground, the Broncos can hang in there. And, you know, Aaron Rodgers did say today, he's like, they brought up and asked him about Sean Payton's comments about hack. And he's like, oh, that's old news. You know, we've all said things that we regret, blah, blah, blah. But I have a feeling he's just saying that's the media. And Rodgers really wants to beat the Broncos here. Really wants oh, to yeah. embarrass him. If they can, I think they're going to try to embarrass him. But I don't know. Pastor Tan's been that dude this year. So I think it's an, another tougher week for Garrett Wilson. But better days are was, certainly ahead. And that's another reason why I like Mike Williams so much. Because I think. You know, Garrett Wilson will get his, but I think they're going to do it. Rodgers is smart enough to know, like, why would I attack that matchup when we when Mike Williams and Alan Lazard can expose some of the other matchups? Absolutely. Next, the Eagles, two and a half point favorites on the road at Tampa Bay. The over under 45, sorry, 44 and a half right now. Eagles missing some weapons, but the Bucks just got embarrassed by Denver. Eagles are still the favorite without potentially A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. You back in the birds on the road? I am. Do you, do you know how fucking mad they are after last year when they, they had such a good season going and fell apart at the end and just got embarrassed in the wild card round against Tampa Bay? I mean, this game's going to mean so much to the Eagles. I mean, it's basically the same team from last year running it back with you. I mean, you got a couple guys on the defense and a couple guys on the offense, but I mean, you basically have that same team from last year. So they're going to come in freaking pissed off and just want to kill the Buccaneers. And while I don't think they'll kill them, I definitely think they'll do enough to cover the spread here. I think they'll end up winning by a touchdown here. Cause I'm, you know, everyone was all gung ho on the Bucs and, Oh, you clowns. I mean, look at you guys, you didn't know what you were talking about. Well, this Bucks team just got embarrassed by the Broncos at home. So I think it's more of the median where maybe we were a little low on them, but those Bucs fans were way too high on them. So 
it's funny. Nobody wanted to say anything this week after the Broncos embarrassed him. Yeah, we can go fishing through our comments on we the could, we video. Should. To, we should. We could. Let's wait we could. after this Let, week. Let's wait. Yeah. Win. Yeah, but I do have Tampa Bay here, so <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I maybe you don't that don't fishing. I think it's a bounce back game for the Bucks. They laid an egg last week. Try to right the ship here. They beat Philadelphia in the playoffs in the same building last year. I see the same thing happening here. They rank somewhat similar statistically on the defensive side of the ball, but with Philly missing their top weapons, most likely. I'm going to lean with the Bucks here. Also, Hertz's turnovers are really bothering me, and I think there could be a big interception or a fumble late in the game, which could turn the tide. And one thing to note, Todd Bulls said he does want to get Mike Evans more involved. That just screams Mike Evans getting pumped targets. I think he catches a deep ball from Baker and goes for over 100 in this one. Was very tempted to put him in Big Dog's parlay, but I, I stayed away because Philadelphia did do a pretty good job limiting Mike Evans in the playoffs last year. We'll yeah, see Kate if they Otten have a similar game plan. Kate Otten and like the number three, four, and five wide receivers beat him. It wasn't the Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, Rack White show. Also, Bucky Irving, it sounds like, is going to be – taking that backfield sooner than later so if you have white i mean i would try to unload him before it's too late yeah i mean white has still been more so used as a pass protector and in the receiving game so i'm not sure bucky's going to take over that full role but there's no doubt bucky irving is the better running like runner well but the, that was why white was so good last year because he had so many goal line touchdowns you know and if that goes to bucky irving i mean that's a big part of white's game where it's like he goes from you know a potential top 12 running back to a, a flex you know because last year yeah. he finishes the rb5 because he had so many all those go, all those goal line touchdowns and if that goes away i mean i don't know how, i don't know where he finishes but he might not even finish in the top 30 at that point absolutely Next, Cincinnati, four-and-a-half-point favorites on the road at Carolina. The over-under, 48-and-a-half. Do the Bengals right the ship, or is this a fucking another trap game? So I was so tempted to take the Panthers to win here, but I ended up just taking them to cover. I think the Bengals <laughs> get it done with a game-winning field goal. But, you know, this game's going to mean a lot to Andy Dalton, and I think the offense is going to be able to move the ball again. I mean, the defense was playing fired up, and clearly the Bengals' defense is Swiss cheese. So I think this is a, a start with full confidence. Deontay Johnson, Chuba Hubbard again. Another big week for them. I mean, even Andy Dalton. I mean, you could potentially play him at the quarterback this week with how the Bengals' did bad the Bengals' defense has looked. But at the end of the day, I just think the Panthers' defense isn't good enough to get enough stops to actually keep them in this game, where the Bengals' offense is going to put up a lot, a lot of points. And but I think the Panthers will either get that backdoor cover, or if it'll be like kind of a walk-off field goal by the Bengals. But I just can't see them going zero and four. It's just too tough for me to just a, a healthy Joe Burrow to dropped to 0-4 when he's got Higgins and Chase, too. Yeah, I'm taking the Bengals to win and cover. The Red Rocket revenge game, it's got me a little bit worried. I'm not going to lie. It's got me a little bit worried. But I just think there's no way in hell the Bengals drop to 0-4 and, and don't take care of business here. There's no way they lose the Patriots, Commanders, and Panthers in the first four weeks. It just, I mean, I, I, someone's got to lose their job or something, right? Someone would have to change. I just can't believe that's going to happen. And this is a leg in Big Dog's parlay. Zach Moss to score. He's Moss in the Haas. parlay. Carolina's allowed the fifth most rush yards in the league thus far. J.K. Dobbins in his second game back ran for over 130 yards and scored. New Orleans scored with Kamara and Jamal Williams. Moss has scored in two of three, is the lead back clearly, and the goal line back. So give me Zach Moss this week. I think it's a smash spot. Start him with full confidence in fantasy against Carolina. Zach Moss punched it in. It's one leg for Big Dog's parlay. Let's move on. Jacksonville at Houston. Houston's a seven-point favorite at home. The over-under, 45-and-a-half. Jags just got embarrassed, Reagan. There's no way you're backing them here to win, but can they cover the seven? I actually changed. I, I had them only covering, but I think they're going to win. I just no think way! Back. I know, no dude. Way. I mean, I'm trying to big brain it here again. I think they're backed into such a big corner here where everyone is going to be like, oh, this team sucks, seven points. I mean, it's a get-right game for the Texans. I mean, they look so bad against the Vikings, and now they get to play the Jaguars who got embarrassed. But it's a division game, so I love seven points in a division game where I do think, like, Jacksonville has been underperforming, but I do think they match up pretty well with the Texans. I mean, so I already love the seven points, but I just – in the back of my mind that somehow they get it done here and the way it's been going with the underdogs this year 
Those dogs have been barking. So I think the Jaguars can get it done here. Uh, I mean, they really actually need to get it done here because 0-4, I mean, you might as well just kick Doug, start packing Doug Peterson's bags. Yeah, I think you're absolutely nuts here. I think Houston rolls at home. You're right. Peterson is coaching for his job, but I just don't think the Jags can keep up with Houston's passing attack. The Jags do have a legitimate run defense, but, you know, I don't think Houston really has to rely on the run game here. I think Nico, Diggs, and Tank will all have good days. Nico will have the biggest. I mentioned earlier he's in big dogs parlay. Leg number two. He's been the leading target getter in the red zone for this team. Leading targets overall. I mean, last week when they were out of it, when Mac Jones came in. I'm sorry, not Mac Jones. Um, who's uh, Houston's backup? Davis Mills. Davis Mills. Is it still Davis Mills? I thought he got cut. Mm-hmm. No. Whatever. Whoever came in the backup. Davis Mills, dude. Davis Mills threw him four targets in the <laughs> in the red zone to end the game. They're all incomplete, but, you know, Nico Collins is their guy there, and he feasted against Jacksonville last year at home over 100 yards and a touchdown. I think it's a huge day from C.J. Stroud. I'd take his over in passing yards with full confidence. I think Houston's passing attack dominates here. Stroud might go for 400. I'm not going to lie. I think Houston rolls at home. Yeah. Uh, we'll see, pal. We'll see. Commanders at Cardinals. Cardinals a three-point favorite. The over-under, 50 and a half. I believe that's the highest total on the slate. Mm-hmm. You roll with I'm the so Red Hot Commies it. right now? I am actually. I I'm 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 fully bought in, dude. Walmart, let me let me buy in with you, dude. I know you're bought in. Like I want on the train. I want. I'm in. I'm in. I'm sold on Jaden Daniels. I mean, I'm ecstatic because I took him in a couple underdog leagues, and I mean, he has not. I mean, outside of week two, but that's why you have multiple quarterbacks. But week one and week three, I mean, getting like 20 some points, pushing 30. I mean, that's awesome. And then obviously now him and Terry McLaurin are starting to get that connection going. Brian Robinson looks like a stud. It sucks Eckler's gonna miss, but. I know they ruled him out with a concussion already today. Yep. And I, I know we forgot to talk about that before, but yeah, I think so that kind of sucks. To back up running back um, have a concussion. Eh. No, but I mean, he looked good against the Bengals before he went out. I mean, he had the, the big, he had a couple big runs early. Then he had the twenty or thirty yard touchdown run. I mean, he was good. I mean, and for fantasy, I mean, he's put up uh, almost double digits every week so far. So he's been a great addition for them because I was kind of like I didn't fully understand where he fits in, but. Robinson's looked great, so I think they're going to have to rely on him a lot here. And if they can continue to work on the connection, I mean, I'd love to see Ben Sinek get more involved, but, you know, until they get rid of Zach Ertz, that won't happen. So, you know, it's going to be the Trey McBride experience all over again. Um, But the defense, I think, will continue to improve under Dan Quinn. Um, And while I like the Cardinals a lot, I do think this will be super high scoring here. I'm going to take the commanders at the end of the day to get it done and keep that hot streak going. Trey West, you're going to touch the field again this, this week? I was going to say, do they punt? Do they punt? Uh, I hope not. I I hope hope we don't see what happened last week with Arizona Detroit, where it's 30 points in the first half and three in the second. I want to see some points here. I mean, this is another great matchup for the commander's offense, but Mm -hmm. I think Kyler and the boys get it done at home, even without McBride, even without McBride. I think the Cardinals win. And to wrap up big dogs parlay, we have two touchdown scores this week from this game. Marv, wow. Marvin Harrison. Look, he has over 300 air yards right now. Kyler's pumping him the ball downfield. He has three touchdowns in the last two weeks. And I will target the number one wide out against this Washington secondary every goddamn week until they show that they can stop him. It's been over a year now. They can't stop number one targets. Marv is that guy. Marvin Harrison is going to score and have a big game here. On the flip side, to close it out, Jaden Daniels to score. Yes, I'm taking the reigning rookie of the week after a – I mean, you could say – I mean, that's a career game for a lot of fucking quarterbacks in this league, dude. That game he just played was unreal. He has three touchdowns through two games right now. Allen was the only other mobile quarterback that Arizona played, and that was week one, and he scored twice. Their offense has been cooking. They haven't punted. I love Jaden Daniels in this one as well. Hopefully, we get to the 4 o'clock slate and we have a high-scoring game here. We got guys on both sides, Marvin, Jaden, Daniels, two rookies drafted in the top four to bring us home. That's Big Dog's Parlay this week. What do you think, Reagan? You like those calls? I like it, in this, yeah. In this game in particular, you like you like Marv and you like Jaden? 
I like Marv. I was, I, I would like Brian Robinson more just because, I mean, obviously he, he's going to get the goal line work where Daniels, it really depends. But, but Jaden's you know juicier. juicier. He's juicier. And I like, and I'm a greedy son of a bitch. So I'll take it. <laughs> I do think both of them get in. It's just obviously Robinson's a more safe play, especially with I no agree. Eckler. But, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, I can certainly go Brian Robinson here, particularly if Eckler's out. But I think they but, both get in. Yeah, I do think they both get in. And so I like should we just that. add, should we make the big dog parlay the, the five leg big dog parlay? Oh, well, let's, let's not too get a little too, too crazy. Too much here. juice. Too much hey, juice. We we're, up, we're up 22 units so yeah. far with a four legger. So let's stick, let's stick to the formula. I could lose every big dog's parlay the rest of the year, and I won you guys money already. So that's a good feeling. That's a good feeling. Shut All right. Shut up. Shut up. Let's move on. Know. The Pats. He's going to hit more. <laughs> the Pats at the Niners. Niners a 10 point favorite, even with no McCaffrey, no Debo. Kittle, hopefully Kittle's back here. I'm assuming this line is reflecting Kittle getting back in the lineup. But I don't know, Reagan. Do you have faith in the Patriots to cover this fat of a spread? It's a big, I believe no. it's the biggest spread we've seen so far this year. It is. It is. I think they finally, finally, uh, the biggest favorite on the board gets the win. They're going to cover the spread here. It's going to be a big Jordan Mason game. Uh, I think the Niners are going to have their way. I mean, they, they're not going to fall to one and three, let's be honest. They're 100% winning. I just think they get a cover here. I don't think Brissett's going to be able to move the ball well. Maybe we'll see Drake May towards the end, but I will say right now, this is the last time this year we see Jacoby Myers as a, or Jacoby Brissett as a starter. I think Drake May will be starting in week five for this team. Um, really? I just think, yeah, I just think at this point, I mean, it's going downhill quick and It'll be at home against the Dolphins, a team who won't have two wins struggling. And I think it's a good game to get um, May's confidence up early. So, and I think if you don't do it there, then you got to play the Texans and stuff. So I think it's better to get him in next week. Otherwise you're kind of punting it till then you go to London. So you're not going to put him in his first game in London. So you're punting it down a couple games from there. So I think that Miami Dolphins game is a good starting point for him at home. Yeah. I'm also going to back the Niners here, but I'm not super confident. I'm a little worried. You know, this defense kind of has some concerns after what the Rams were able to do last week without so many starters along, amongst the offensive line and no cup and no Nakua. However, Mayo is no McVay. You know what I mean? So that's certainly a factor here. I mean, Brissett's no Stafford. So, you know, I think yeah, Purdy yeah, has, he's, he's not. <laughs> yeah, I think Purdy not has take. another good game here. Ten points, a lot to give, though. And New England, yeah, last week the Jets kicked the shit out of him, but. Keep in mind, they bat. I mean, they won outright at Cincinnati week one. But now, how good of a win was that? I guess we'll see if the Cincinnati could turn it around. But they battled with Seattle as well. And also, we have our questions with Seattle. I'm just saying, they played tough football. So 10 points Fair. is a lot to give. But the Niners do have a top 10 run defense so far this year. And Fred Warner will be on Hunter Henry for a lot of this game. And that's been the main target for Brissett. So I just think it's kind of a bad matchup for New England. Can Ramondre get back on track? Because I think that's the only way New England can stay in games is if Ramondre can have the opportunity to get 20 carries. Like, they're not falling too far behind, but is he effective enough? Because he wasn't super effective last week. Uh, so, no, he was not effective at all. <laughs> he had, no. He didn't even break a fantasy point. I mean, He that, had one big carry in which he face bass the defender. <laughs> oh, and yeah. He fumbled, you yeah. know? So... Yeah, I, I, for New England to hang in this one, it's got to be a good game script. They got to play good defense. But Purdy just looks so good last week, even without Debo Samuel and George Kettle, that I'm gonna have to roll with San Francisco here. And this is my pick in Survivor. I know it's super chalky, but like me too, buddy. Dude, Reagan, I noticed in the Survivor pool, I looked at the leaderboard today because I didn't re fully grasp how many people got knocked out last week I, yeah. until you know you get your buyback registered and you're back in. There's only one guy in the pool that hasn't lost yet. I know. I thought I was going to be the second guy to do that, but the fucking Bengals had other plans. Dude, it's crazy. That. I know. I it was, was talking like a... that. Go ahead. No, I was just saying I was talking so much smack as if the Bengals already won, and boy, was I getting Bro, you were talking blamed. so much shit on Well, Monday. it was fucking BS because all these kids are like, <laughs> oh, we should be able to buy back in. It's like, no, dude, you're not. The rule is you get one buyback. You don't get a second buyback. I don't care how yeah, much money you guys want to pay. I thought it's that like, was yeah. Stupid. Of course you want to say that. How is that fair to me? I like. What, how is that fair to me? Because all you guys got kicked out. Like I'm not that greedy. Like fuck off. Next year, bye. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I mean, I thought that was annoying, but it was like a thirty high thirties amount of people in the pool. Now I believe there's like fifteen left. No, dude, there were sixty something when we started. Are you serious? Yes. Just I a mean, lot of people yeah. didn't buy back. 
Yeah, there's like 17 people left right now, and only one person hasn't lost yet. It's just been a crazy first three weeks, dude. So, mm-hmm. I mean, if San Fran, I had imagined a lot of people are going to be on San Francisco this week. If San Francisco loses, it might be a five man pool in like week five. I mean, that'd be wild. Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully not. Hopefully not. I'm, ba- I'm backing him. Are you backing him too? I said that. Yeah, that's my pick as well. All right. So, cool, cool, cool. Hopefully not. Yeah. It was either that or the Jets. And I was like, you know what? I think I want to save the Jets for another game because just with Sean Payton, Nathaniel Hackett, there's just a lot of other factors there as opposed to just two teams squaring off. Yeah. Fair. Makes it a little bit more dicey, I think. All right. All right. Cleveland at Las Vegas. Raiders a one point favorite. The over under 37 and a half. Another low total. A lot of low totals on this slate. This is just a very ugly game, Reagan. Who are you backing here? Deshaun Watson or Gardner Minshew? Uh, I'm taking I, – I, I took the Browns. I mean, both te- it's going to be ugly because both teams have good defenses and both teams have pretty bad offenses. But I think the Browns here, I think they, they needed a lot more here. I mean, they haven't looked good. I mean, they just lost to the Giants at home. So, um, But, yeah, I mean, taking them, am I confident in it? No. I think this could go either way, obviously. But – I'm closing my eyes and taking the Browns. <laughs> I'm closing my eyes and taking the Raiders. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the I'm gonna go with the home team here. Yeah. And this is what kind of sold it for me. Cleveland's defense doesn't really scare me as much as it did last year. Not that they've really had a ton of turnover on the defensive side of the ball, but they're just not playing as well. And last year, I mean, they were lights out at home. But on the road, like, they were not good on the road last year. They almost let up 30 points per game on the road as a defense. It's just at home, like, their splits were crazy. But Mm -hmm. the Giants just went in there and scored. Yeah, they only scored 21. They scored 21 in the first half, and then they didn't score the rest of the game. So, I don't know. But that's also the Giants. A lot of people were saying the Giants are a bottom three team in the league, which they very very well still might be. You know what I mean? So, with the defense not having as much faith in it on the road here, and with Deshaun Watson being the quarterback – who he's just so bad. I, I don't want to trust him at home. I certainly don't want to trust him on the road. <laughs> what sold it for me was Cleveland's offensive line, very beat up right now. I think Max Crosby and Christian Wilkins will win this game for the Raiders. It will be low scoring, but I think it's going to be those two guys up front getting it done. Maybe Tyree Wilson lives up to his draft status and has a big game. That'd be cool. Oh, I mean, this game is 100%. Whatever team wins, it's going to be because their defense stepped up and maybe got a – maybe. I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if – the winning team's defense has more points than their offense. hundred <laughs> percent. Like a strip sack. Like, and it's like, yeah. Oh, the Raiders won 10 to fucking seven, you know, something like that. Yeah. It's going to be ugly. What's going to be Not ugly. Me. Oh yeah. All right. Chiefs at chargers chiefs at eight and a half point favorite on the road. Very low total 39 and a half reflecting the beat up Justin Herbert, the beat up tackles for the chargers here. And the chiefs offense just really hasn't clicked yet. But they're still 3-0, and very similar to last year. It's a big spread, though, Reagan. I know. That's why I took the Chargers. Eight and a half points. I mean, even if Herbert doesn't play, um, I think they can get the backdoor cover here. I mean, the Chiefs, I think they'll win for sure, but they just seem to like to play ugly games that come down to the wire. Like, they're not that same dominant Chiefs team that blows teams out of the water. I feel like it's just like they like to make it all mucky and ugly and get it done. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. A win's a win, but they definitely don't look as dominant as they have. Uh, even last year in the regular season, similar thing, just really not dominating. Like they got their wins, but I just feel like this is going to be low scoring. Both teams are going to want to run the ball and play defense. So I'll take the eight and a half, but the Chiefs are going to get it done here, especially if Herbert's out. I mean, even with Herbert, they'll probably get it done, but yeah, I'll take the points, especially because the Chargers are home too. Not that it's much of an advantage in LA, but (laughs) it's really not much of an advantage in LA. There's going to be a lot of red in those stands and I'm going to back the Chiefs to cover. There are just too many injuries for me to take the Chargers, and even if Herbert plays, no Rashawn Slater, no Joe Alt is certainly a problem. And no Derwin James, who historically has matched up on Kelsey. I think that's going to be a problem, and that's why I said earlier, I think this is Kelsey's game. I think he's around 50 yards, nothing crazy, but I think he scores. I think Andy Reid wants to get him involved. With no Derwin James on him, it certainly helps. I think the Chiefs get it done like 23-6, to 23-7, to something like that. Not a super high-scoring game, but a compromise Justin Herbert. The running game. I mean, look what the Chiefs just did to B. John Robinson last week. He had like 32 rushing yards. You know what I mean? So if for a team that wants to run the ball like the Chargers, you don't have your two mauling tackles. J.K. Dobbins, I'm sorry. I know he's had a good start to the year, but I don't think he has the juice to win this game for the Chargers. 
Eight and a half, though, I mean, it is a fat spread, and it's a division game, so you never know what could happen. All right, Buffalo at Baltimore, Sunday night football. Ravens, two and a half point favorites, over under 46 and a half. The Bills look legit, Reagan, but this is probably their toughest te- test yet with the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, I'm taking the Ravens here just because the Bills have been soaring so high. I think this is kind of a comeback to earth game where I think Baltimore figured out a lot, um, especially with Derrick Henry. I think he's going to have another big game. I mean, it's pretty evident here that you got to give them the ball 20 times to really get it going. It opens up a lot. I mean, this Ravens team is built to run the ball and you'd like to see Mark Andrews involvement go up. I mean, that's a little scary, but um, even without him being involved, I mean, I just think the Ravens uh, last week played some great defense. I mean, they did let them come back, but I think a lot of it has to do with the conservative play calling. I think if, you know, if they didn't take their foot off the gas pedal, Dallas isn't able to come back into the game. It's just kind of, kind of just were like, yeah, we'll just like take it easy. And like, you know, just let the time bleed out. And if Dallas puts up points, we'll live with it. So I think they'll learn from that and they won't take the foot off the gas pedal this time. And I think the Ravens get it done here. I think it'll be close to a double digit win here. I think the, and Allen's going to struggle. I do think he's going to have multiple turnovers in this game. Yeah, so something here for me that's kind of weird. Baltimore's allowed the most passing yards in the league thus far, which Mm -hmm. you'd think with that secondary just should not be a thing. They've also allowed the least amount of rushing yards. So for a Bills team that's been trying to lean into the run, but then you saw what they did last week, Josh Allen throwing four touchdown passes, they can beat you many different ways. So – the game script I'm seeing here is both quarterbacks slanging that thing. Josh Allen pushing the ball downfield against this Ravens secondary that struggled despite the amount of talent they have back there. I don't know if James Cook's being able to get it rolling on the ground in this one, but I do like Baltimore at home. It, they've had a brutal start to their season schedule-wise, but I think if they can get to 2-2, two and two, get into the softer part of their schedule, they got to be feeling pretty good about themselves. This is a monster game early on in the season. I think it's a very close one, but I think the Bills fall just short, and that two and a half might pay dividends at the end. I could see a field goal. A lot of talk with Justin Tucker right now. He's missed three field goals. He said he's going to work on his mechanics. Justin Tucker, game winner. Silences all the doubters. How about that call? How about them apples? Can't wait to clip that next week and be like, see? We don't just fucking take our picks out of thin air. (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's move on to... Yeah, it's another week where we have two Monday Night Football games. The Titans at the Dolphins. Dolphins a one-point favorite. I, I'd imagine most people would be like, yeah, I'm not going to put in the effort of setting up two TVs. I'm going to watch the second game, Seattle-Detroit, and not the Will Levis versus Skylar Thompson slash Tim Boyle show. But it's looking, yeah. who knows? Yeah, it's 36-and-a-half point total for this one. That's another ugly game, brother. But who are you backing? I'm taking the Titans because I have more confidence in their defense here. Um, I think, I think honestly, I still do think Levis is a good quarterback. He's just got to kind of limit some of those mistakes, but I think the tools are there. I think if he, I mean, we saw, he kind of reminds me similar to Josh Allen where you see the mobilities there. You see he's got the big arm, but early on he struggled a lot, but I think he'll eventually come into his own. If he can really limit some of those dumb mistakes, this offense can be good. And the defense, it's legit. I, I fully think that. I mean, the reason why they allowed so many points to Green Bay last week is, you know, when your quarterback's throwing pick sixes and, you know, really struggling to move the ball and putting them in bad positions and you're on the field a lot, it's going to hurt you. But I have way more faith right now in the Titans' offense versus the, whatever Miami throws out there at quarterback. And I have more faith in the Titans' defense because the Dolphins' defense really hasn't looked great all year. I mean, they were getting smacked by the Bills before Tua went out. Last week, they really couldn't stop Seattle. And then week one, I mean, they stepped up in the second half, but Jacksonville, an offense that really hasn't looked good at all, had their best game, and they were kind of having their way in the first half. So I'm going to back the Titans here. I'm also back in the Titans. Similar reasons, man. I mean, somehow I'm back in the Tennessee Titans. They've yeah. found multiple different ways to lose. You know, it's like the team just can't get out of their own way. But they do have a top three pass defense so far this year with Snead and Abouzie added to the mix. Now, part of that might be, okay, you had Malik Willis at one point. So, like, it's not like they were throwing the ball a lot. But still, they're a top three passing defense right now. They held their own against the Jets. So for Miami to stay in this game and win it, it's going to have to be the A-Chan show. And it's going to have to be a lot of big plays from A-Chan. Even though you have those two-star receivers out wide, you got two stud corners to match up with them. And the quarterback play is just not there. And yeah, the Tennessee defense has looked better than Miami's at this point. However, Dolphins still do have a really good secondary. 
They just haven't figured it out yet, but they have talent back there. And Levis has been so turnover prone. I do think he's going to turn the ball over again. I do think it's going to be an ugly game, a defensive battle, maybe four or five turnovers in totality here. But I do think Tennessee gets the win on the road. Let's get it. Let's Finally, get it. Reagan, let's wrap it up with the Seahawks at the Lions. Three and a half point favorites are Detroit. The over under 46 and a half. You already told us you think Detroit. Yeah. Molly Wop Seattle here. I would have taken like, this line. If would you it was like to elaborate? Would you like I to elaborate? Taken, I would love to. I would have taken this line if it was nine and a half. Seattle's are, is just such frauds right now. They haven't beat anyone. They barely got by the Broncos. They barely got by the Patriots. And then, yeah, sure. You looked great against a Skylar Thompson, Tim Boyle duo last week. Awesome. I mean, your defense did step. It has been, you know, kind of stepping up. You stepped up against the Dolphins, but, you know, you allowed the Patriots with the Joe Kobe Brissett to put up 20. And, I mean, you almost lost the game where Bo Nix was just checking down, checking down, checking down. So I don't have faith in this defense. I really don't think they've been tested uh, where I think a good Lions juggernaut of an offense will really test them, put up a lot of points. And I'd say the Lions defense is going to be the best defense they've faced so far. So I don't think Geno, I think Geno Smith's going to struggle here. And if Kenneth Walker isn't able to go, I mean, Charbonnet's looked good, but he's looked good against some bad teams. So I, I think that's going to hurt the team a lot here. Um, but yeah, I, I the Lions rolling here. I think, like I said earlier, they could win like 35 to 10. I think it'll be double digits, if not 20 plus. I agree. I think Seattle's really fluky. I think the Lions are going to expose them here. I think they cover. You know, see out, the Seahawks have allowed the least amount of passing yards so far this year. But as Reagan yeah. mentioned, the quarterbacks they played were Jacoby Brissett, Bo Nix, and Skylar Thompson. So they got a different thing coming for them this week. And the great thing about Detroit's offense is their offensive line is so dominant. But how do they want to beat you that day? They could run the ball down yeah. your throat with Montgomery and Gibbs like they did last week. Or the week before, it's like, oh, we're going to beat you with Amon Ra getting 15 targets and Jamison Williams getting 11. And Laporta hasn't even really been involved that much. They can beat you no. in so many different ways. And they also play so well at home. And they have their debut of their blackout uniforms. There's no way they lose a nose. Yeah, I didn't even know about that. But wow, now I feel really confident. <laughs> yeah. And also, I mean, they added DJ Reader this year. And their run defense has been awesome. So I don't think Charbonnet, because I, I don't believe Walker's going to play this week. I believe Charbonnet is, is going to struggle more so than he has the previous couple games. I do think DK Metcalf, he just seems to have big games in prime time. I don't know. I think DK catches a long one for a touchdown, but it won't be enough. Detroit's going to roll here. Yeah, fair, 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 